Good morning. And for those of you who don't know, I need to tell you that I'm old enough to remember vinyl. And I don't mean the vinyl revival, I mean vinyl the first time round. And I actually remember the introduction of the CD back in the 80s and how revolutionary it was supposed to be. And the fact that you could put jam on it and scratch it all over the place and it would still work, which was bullshit, but there you go. But when we had uh, records, the 12-inch vinyl, you often would take out the disc and it would have an inner sleeve and printed on the inner sleeve, it would say in big, bold letters, home taping is killing music. And it didn't. It never did kill music and music went on fine. And then later on, we were told that illegal downloads were killing music and we had bands like Metallica going after Napster and trying to kill them off. And, and they did, in fact. But that led to, well, proper download sites where you could actually buy the music. And lo and behold, when those items were made available at a reasonable price to download, illegal downloading went down. Never stopped and you will never completely stop it, but it went down considerably. And we've actually moved into a situation now where we have things like Spotify and Amazon Music where you can stream these items and pay a monthly fee or whatever. And that's how a lot of people consume their music. Music hasn't gone away. Taping didn't kill it. Downloads didn't kill it. And, you know, this perennial argument from corporate bodies that copying is killing whatever it might be, music or films or games... It just doesn't stand up to scrutiny because these industries continue to make money and the people at the top of these industries continue to bath in the bloody stuff because they are worth a fortune. And, you know, there's even evidence to suggest that copying is doing precisely the opposite of killing it because you can look at what happens with the people who copy for the most part and they tend to be kids and those kids will copy because often they can't afford to buy these items or they copy things that they may not have bought anyway. And then later on, if they like those items when they grow up and they've got a job and they can afford to buy them, they go on and they buy them. And that was the case with me. I used to copy lots of music when I was younger. I used to tape a lot of albums from my mates. Most of those albums I now own. Most of those albums I own, well, in multiple formats, from vinyl to CD to SACD, Blu-ray audio, downloads. I've got them multiple times. So I ended up being a consumer because, in effect, those copies that I made were like advertising and they got me interested in music. And, you know, there's also an argument that video games have impacted on this as well. And if you look at the demographics, and I'll, I'll put a link into a Guardian article that talks about this. If you look at the demographics of those people buying music you know, the, the the group that tended to always buy the most music was, well, young men. And they have tended to migrate somewhat towards video games. And if you look at the growth in video game sales against the drop in music sales, they, they correlate. But anyway, like I say, I'll put a link into that Guardian article and you can look at that and make your own mind up about that. But this brings me round to look at games and the... <laughs> Well, not specifically piracy as such, but ROMs and the fact that people have got ROMs of old games. People have been downloading these ROMs for decades now in order to play games that they used to play when they were kids or whatever. And Nintendo have decided again, because they've done it in the past, but they've decided recently that they're going to really clamp down on this and they've been going after ROM sites. And they've threatened loveroms.com and loveretro.com. And we've even got Emu Paradise now removing links to all the ROMs on its site for being sued by Nintendo. And presumably Nintendo thinks that this is hitting their bottom line. I, I honestly don't know what's going on inside Nintendo's head. But I, I, I do have to ask the question, you know, why are they doing this? Are the ROM sites actually taking revenue from Nintendo? Well, to some extent, maybe they're taking some revenue because people aren't buying their little mini consoles or whatever. But I don't think the evidence is there to suggest that that's happening at all. Because if you actually look at the sales of their little mini retro consoles, people are buying them in droves. And, you know, you make something cheap enough, it will sell. You sell it a decent value for money, people will buy it. I actually think they're still a little bit overpriced, but that's my personal take. I'm an old git and I don't like paying too much money for things. But 
You know, if you look at the music industry, uh, it, it could at least make the claim that they were losing some revenue. And I, I don't really think that if you look at a lot of the games that people are downloading from the likes of Nintendo and Sega, they can make that same claim. I don't think they've got a leg to stand on, in fact, because a lot of these games haven't been made available for years, sometimes decades. In, in, Nintendo are no, notorious for drip-feeding retro fans, aren't they? And if you look at the virtual console, you get a game here and a game there, and, and they failed to deliver significant numbers of games for years. And people have been crying out for a lot of these games, and the only way they could get hold of them were from downloading ROMs and using emulators. And in some cases, uh, downloading those ROMs and using an emulator, which was you know, coded in such a way that they could upscale them and so on, they would get a better version of those games by using emulators. So we're in a situation where the only way you can play these games, the only way you can preserve these games is through emulators and through the ROMs. And so Nintendo going after these people, well, as I say, it just doesn't seem to make any sense to me. But, you know, again, coming back to this, why have Nintendo done this? Why have they now started going after the likes of Love ROMs? Well, maybe they are intending to do something with their online. Maybe they're intending to, to create a service whereby, a bit like Game Pass, you can pay a monthly fee and then you can have a whole library of Nintendo's back catalogue. Maybe, maybe that's what they're doing. And maybe that's why they're going after these ROM sites. But we don't actually know, do we? And I would suggest that it's more to do with their corporate attitude to this is mine. And if, uh, you know, it, we're not going to let you have it. If we don't want you to have it, you can't have it. Behaving a bit like a child who doesn't want anyone else to play with their toys. If they are releasing a new service, it will at least mitigate some of their extreme actions. I can understand then that maybe they would be thinking it would hit their bottom line. But the fact of the matter is that some of these sites have been in place for years. And has it really impacted Nintendo in any way, shape or form? Well, they seem to be going from strength to strength. And the main impact that Nintendo have had has been Nintendo themselves. If they produce crap consoles, well, arguably like the Wii U. I actually like the Wii U, but a lot of people didn't and it didn't sell very well. When they come out with the Switch and it sells well, Nintendo's uh, fortunes turn around, don't they? So a lot of this, a lot of their ability to make money, their ability to bring in revenue is down to them. And that brings me back again to this service, whether it's going to happen or not. If Nintendo did this, they wouldn't even need to worry about places like Emu Paradise or Love ROMs. Because the fact of the matter is, people would buy this service and then they could have these games. But Nintendo aren't making them available. And, and even more worrying for me on this is, is something that's similar with the music industry. If you look at Nintendo and you look at Sony, they seem only interested in their back catalogue insofar as it can make them money. And that could be a big problem moving forward into the future, and I'll get to that in a minute. But just let's go back to the music industry just for a moment. You know, it, it became really evident really early on that the suits in the music industry were not actually concerned at all with preserving music or music history. They left it up to small labels and enthusiasts to keep old recordings alive. And the fact is that some small companies even had to resort to using old recordings from enthusiasts on tape or, you know, whatever recordings they had, reel-to-reel, -reel, in order to put out albums or collections of songs because the original masters were in such a poor state or had been destroyed entirely. So the music industry weren't interested at all in any music that wasn't making them rafts of money. And there are rumours of something similar happening within gaming and, and with Nintendo seemingly having downloaded a ROM from one of the ROM sites in order to be able to sell it back to their fans. Well, well, you know where I'm going with this. I can't tell you whether they actually did download a ROM from a ROM site 
and you can look this up and, and, and decide for yourself on that whether they did or not. But frankly, it wouldn't surprise me at all, you know, with their track record. And the fact is that they they have a, a, a seeming disdain for both their fans and their back catalogue. And so if they did actually not bother to keep a, a copy of a particular game and then had to go to a ROM site to download it, well, as I say, not surprised in the least if that actually happened. But look it up for yourself and see what you think about that. You've probably heard about it already if you follow this kind of thing. I don't know. As with the music industry, though, it's pretty clear that the gaming industry is increasingly just about the money. You know, we see it with the manipulative ways in which companies like EA and Activision monetize their franchises, even going so far as to introduce loot boxes into remasters of old games. Activision. We see it with bodies representing the industry trying to shut down projects to preserve or recreate servers to keep old games running so people can play old games in their online formats. Uh, you know, there's a museum, and I did a video about this, and I'll put a link in. There's a museum in the States that was trying to recreate servers, and the the one of the industry bodies, I forget which one it was, tried to take them to court and shut them down, or at least shut down their ability to recreate these servers because they said they owned the code. And, okay, I understand that, but one of their arguments was, if they are able to do this, it means anyone will be able to play these old games. Well, yeah, isn't that the point? But I'm getting off topic a little bit. We're seeing with Nintendo that a large company's once again going after the little guy for no good reason, or at least no apparent good reason. The fact is that these ROM sites often care more about the preservation and the art and the history of video games than the companies that made the games in the first place. And that's wrong. As far as I'm concerned, that doesn't make any sense at all. And, and that brings me round to the, the kind of ultimate point of the video. At the moment, we're in a situation where people can create ROMs and they can make copies of these games and they can upload them. And so if the companies aren't bother, bothering to put these games out, then, you know, in the grey area, the illegal area, if you like, people still can get hold of these games and they still can preserve and play these games, even if the big companies that made them don't want us to, for whatever reason that might be. But by the next generation of consoles, well, <laughs> by then it'll almost entirely be digital downloads. And at that point, companies like EA, Activision, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, and on and on and on, will entirely control which games we can play and how much we pay for them. They'll control the distribution, the creation, every aspect of it. And if they don't want us playing certain old games, or even if they just can't be bothered to release them or remaster them, well then we could be in a situation where we simply won't be able to play them. Personally, I think that's a really bleak future. Unfortunately, the chances of Nintendo killing off every ROM site or removing all ROMs from circulation is, well, it's, it's, it's the cat's out of the bag, isn't it? It's an impossibility. And so, with a little bit of research, we'll always be able to find these older games, even if they haven't been officially available for, what, decades sometimes. It's ironic, though, that the so-called criminals in all this are the ones trying to help preserve the history for future generations. And in this instance, it's because those people, those criminals, if you like, unlike the people running the companies, they're actually enthusiasts. They're actually people who care about the old games and see them as works of art. And they want to keep those games alive. Once we no longer have the physical copies, though, and Nintendo and the rest control the production, the distribution, everything else that I've already talked about, well, that could change. As I say, we'll always be able to get our hands on games from the 80s, 90s, and even up to now. But I'm not sure that games for the PS5 and whatever the new Xbox is going to be and into the digital future with Nintendo, because they're all going to be download only, I'm not sure if Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, 
if they, if they don't want us to get hold of these games, well, in 40 years' time, then they may disappear altogether. And, and there will be simply no way of getting them because the only way we could get them would be directly through Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, or EA's distribution service or Activision's distribution service. And so unless someone can find a way of cracking into them and making copies, as I say, they could disappear completely. I hope not. You know, and, and as, as I say, the crackers usually find a way in and they usually find a way of copying these things. And I hope they continue to do so. And I know, I know I'm talking about a legal grey area here. But while it might be illegal to copy these games, surely it's, it's morally wrong to prevent these games from being available. You know, in any way. And like I say, if you want these games to be under your control, make them available, Nintendo. Bring out a service that allows us to play them. Stop drip-feeding people. And, and Sony, stop treating your own back catalogue with complete mm, disdain. People still like these games. People still want to play these games. And just because they want to do that, it's not stopping them from going out and buying new games. Because part of me thinks that that's what you're afraid of. You're afraid that people won't buy the new games because they're too busy playing old games. And that's frankly bullshit. If you think that, you don't understand how gamers work, how their minds work. I play new games. I play old games. I play games from right across the different decades and for different reasons. <sighs> If this does happen, if we end up in a situation where you can't get hold of old games, then the fans of old games, the gaming historians, the, the people who want to study old games because they may want to go on and make their own games, well, they're going to have to make do with reading about old games rather than actually playing them. And that will be such a travesty. I, I actually think, much like the record industry, the gaming industry it continually shoots itself in the foot because it treats the fans, people like me and, and the people creating some of these ROM sites, and not, not all of them because some of the people creating the ROM sites are scumbags who want to make money and they're not interested in the art. They're just interested in doing it because they want to make a quick buck. But there are people out there who've got these sites who genuinely are interested. And when you feel like the companies are actually attacking the very people who are the biggest fans, then there's a real problem with the industry. As I say, we saw it with the museum. We've seen it most recently. That I mean, there's a story going around that Bethesda have tried to stop someone selling a second-hand game because of the way they marketed it. But all these stories, they just lead you to believe that the industry has some sort of disconnect where it doesn't understand its own customers and its own fans. And that can't continue. It really can't. Something needs to give. And we need to be able to get hold of these old games. We need to be able to play them. We need to be able to research them. We need to be able to talk about them. We need to be able to compare them to modern games. And we need to be able to look at these things and have an overview so that people can study them and, and it can be considered a serious art form. And look, you know, I know I'm going on. I know I'm getting on my high horse here. But if you're a keen gamer, if you love games, and I love games, I'm a perennial newbie, <laughs> but I do love games and I do consider them an art form. And I do think that companies like Nintendo need to change tack. They need to understand that they've got gold in their hands here and not just because of the money it can make them. But that's what I think about it anyway. I think Nintendo are making a huge mistake here. They're going to alienate people. They're going to alienate the biggest fans, the people who are most interested in games. And for what? But let me know what you think. I, I've been going on. I've repeated myself a bit because this is not really scripted. This is just off the top of my head. I'm trying to fill this in in a couple of hours while my little boy's playing with his mum uh, because <laughs> it's the summer holidays. 
But let's have a chat about it in the comments. Tell me what you think. You know, do you think these ROM sites are scumbags? Do you think they shouldn't be doing it? Would you rather these games weren't available at all than that they were available on ROM sites? Because I do think that gamers can be a little bit hypocritical about this. They they moan on about these ROM sites some, sometimes and people I hear people saying, oh, you know, you shouldn't steal from these companies. But at the same time, they want to play the games. So if you want to play the games and the companies aren't making them available, there's only one place you can go for them for now at least. It may not be the case in the future, as I say. But as I say, let me know in the comments what you think. We'll have a chat and I'm going to go and grab a cup of tea and have a lie down in a dark room and I'll speak to you in the next one. Bye.